Hi, welcome to Diamond Delight Edibles. My name is Liz, if this is the first time you're stopping by, and for the rest of you guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for your support. You guys are truly are awesome. So today, normally I usually do sweet things, sweet uh, big things or candies, but today I'm gonna show you how to make a can of French bread. That's right, it's really easy, and we make this with can of flour. So if you haven't seen the video on how to make can of flour, there's two ways. I do have a video, bleh, I do have a video on it, two ways of how to do it with tincture and with bud. So check those out on how to do up the can of flour. Other than that, we're gonna jump into those ingredients with the equipment that we need and we're, let's, uh, let's get baked. All right, so for our ingredients, what you're going to need is three, or sorry, two and three quarters cups of all purpose or bread flour, you can use either and I'm using a quarter cup of can of flour. So it needs to be three cups of flour, however you want to split that up, that's totally up to you, but that's how I generally like quarter cup is a generally good amount for pretty much everything that I make. So that's how I'm making up my three cups. Then you're gonna want about an additional cup of just all purpose of the bread flour that we may need to add in um, to, to uh, stiffen up our dough and for uh, possibly kneading. Then you're gonna need one and a quarter cups of water, tepid water. It needs to be between 120 and 130 degrees. That's what activates um, your yeast. You go on one package of the quick, um, of the quick rise yeast. If you have the regular, it's just gonna take a lot more time, so the quick rise is great stuff. One and a half teaspoons of salt, kosher salt preferably. If you don't have kosher salt, regular salt will do and a tablespoon of honey. The honey is going to help to activate your yeast because warm water and sugar um, is a great breeding ground for yeast. So and it also helps to make your bread a little chewy. So it's really, really nice. But again, if you don't have that, if you don't have honey, you can use a teaspoon of sugar um, when we make up our, our yeast, when we have to activate our yeast. All right, so the equipment that you're going to need is a stand mixer or you get to do it by hand, yay you. I would not attempt this with a hand mixer. The motor is probably not strong enough, even if it does have dough hooks. It was probably not strong enough, you will burn out your motor. Trust me, I burnt out three. Uh, so as I said, stand mixer with the dough hook or by hand. Um, some non-stick cooking spray or some uh, vegetable oil, just oil bowl. You're gonna need two bowls, one for your uh, machine and another one. To rise your dough in, we're going to need some parchment paper. You're going to need two quarter sheets or one half, um, one half sheet baking sheet um, and then lined with parchment paper. And then a smaller pan that we're going to use to hold some water. You're going to need a, a, a dough cutter, <laughs> dough cutter, a whisk, spatula, and a serrated knife and a couple of tea towels, whether they need to either be linen or cotton, not terry cloth, because otherwise you will have little spit, little bits of stuff stuck in your bread and you really don't want that. So yeah, so either cotton or linen will work great, or um, you can use paper towel again, as long as it's not a fuzzy kind. And that's it for the equipment. So let's jump right into those ingredients and let's make some bread. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up my water in the microwave for about 30 seconds. I said we need it between 120, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so the very first thing we need to do, as I said, activate our yeast. So you're gonna pour your um, tepid water, your 120, 130 degree Fahrenheit water into a bowl. And we're going to add in our tablespoon of honey. And just stir it around until that dissolves. And then you're going to sprinkle your yeast evenly over your water and honey mixture. Like so. And just give her a stir up. Just get any of your stuff off the sides. And we're gonna set that aside for about 10 minutes. Okay, so your yeast should be looking like this. should be foamy and kind of beige. And if it's not foamy, then it means that your yeast is um, no longer live. So you need to go get yourself some new yeast. Um, uh, yeah, because otherwise you're just gonna have flat bread, not good. So we're gonna take this and we are going to dump it into our flour. 
grab our spatula, make sure to get it all the yeast out. Likes to stick to the side. And we are going to attach the dough hook. And we are going to knead this on low speed until our dough all comes together and starts to all pull away from the sides. And um, yeah, and we will probably have to add more flour as we go along. So just keep watching. And then you can just work your flour down off the sides here. And it'll incorporate into the dough. until it forms uh, until it forms a ball so as I said if it gets starts to get sticky and dough starts to stick to the sides of the bowl or the bottom sprinkle in about a quarter cup of flour at a time this batch doesn't look like it's gonna need flour yay I'm just gonna stop it and take it off the hook and then just let it finish let it finish kneading so I'm gonna add a little bit of flour because it is a little bit sticky but not bad at all. I'm just gonna sprinkle in that, that quarter cup. That should probably do it. So you want the dough so that it's so it's not sticking to your hands, but it's still a little bit sticky, but you're not getting a lot of excess dough stuck to your hands like I was before. So now we're just gonna take this out and we're going to knead this for a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our blender, our mixer, sprinkle a little bit of flour onto your counter, and we're gonna knead this until it's nice and smooth and to knead, use the heel of your um, of your hand. You push in, push, fold it over, push down with the heel, fold over, push down with your heel. And you just keep doing that. And scoot. So if you think you've got enough flour happening, uh, scoot the rest out of the way and just continue kneading until you get that nice supple ball. And we're going to knead this, as I said, till it comes together in a nice, in a nice ball. There's no like gappy pieces. So I talk about gappy pieces and things like that. So you want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Like so. Now we are going to get another bowl and you're going to, and you need to make sure it's pretty big. And we're going to slightly spray it down, or you can use um, vegetable oil. Place our dough into there. And then you're going to want to get a linen or a cotton tea towel, not a terry cloth. You don't want little bits stuck in it. So um, run that under warm water and wring it out really, really, really well. We just want a nice damp towel. We don't want any ex excess water. Then you're just going to put it over the top of your bowl and place your bowl off to the side for about anywhere from 40 to 60 minutes until the dough uh, more than doubles in its size. So right now you see it about that size. So we're gonna, oops, want it to come up to about here. Let's put the top over. Warmest place usually in the kitchen is the top of your fridge. Um, yeah, on the top of your refrigerator because it's higher and you get the warmth off the fridge. So we'll be back in about an hour. So now that our dough is ready, we want to preheat our oven to 375 degrees. All right, so our dough has more than doubled in size. So now you're going to go and you're going to punch. And this releases all the gases out of it. And then you're going to take her out of the bowl. And you plop her on your parchment paper and then you want to make a relatively like a rectangle or oblong we need to cut this in half so however you want to shape that in half yourself so I just kind of work it like this and then I'm just going to use a dough cutter you can use any uh, knife about half. 
Now, if you want to be accurate, weigh it. And then we are going to shape her. I'm going to put one over here. I'm going to fold it and kind of roll her. You want to try and make sure that it stays even. Hope you can see that there. And then place it seam side down. And then you just want to make sure to taper your ends here. So just push them down, make that in there, like so. So same thing, I'm going to do this one, I'm going to fold her over, and just roll her out, roll her out a little bit, Place a dry, a dry linen cloth over them for about 10 minutes. Just let them proof again, and wait for our oven to preheat to 375. Okay, now here's a baking trick for you. Take a smaller metal pan, put it into the oven while on the bottom rack uh, while you're preheating your oven. You want the rack, you want the pan to be as hot as the oven is getting. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pour about a quarter cup of water onto that once our bread is ready to go into the oven and this is going to create a steam bath in there for the bread creating locking in uh, the moisture and giving you that really nice soft bread inside okay so i'm just going to have a quarter cup of water ready to go for when my bread's ready to go into the oven all right so now that our bread has proofed again take your cloth off and you're going to take a serrated edge knife whether it's steak knife any kind of serrated edge and you're just going to make some diagonal cuts into your bread. And we are going to pop these into the oven for 25 to 30 minutes to light golden brown. Nice golden brown all over. And when I put this in, I'm going to throw that water onto that tray. And then part way through breaking your bread, about 10-15 minutes into it, you want to turn your pan around and that way your, your bread gets evenly baked because the back of the oven is hotter than the front of your oven. So don't forget to spin it around about halfway through. Oh, our bread is ready. Check it out. Look at that. Yum, yum. Now, what you can do if you like um, for but extra buttery flavor is to melt a little is melt a little bit of butter and right after you take it out of the oven just give a light brushing of butter all over the top and that will just soak it nicely give you a nice buttery flavor or you can keep it plain and then once you then you just want to transfer it over to a cooling rack and let out and let them cool. Don't touch the hot pan. I'm just going to let those cool until uh, probably about 20 minutes. 20 so I'm just going to let those cool for about 20-30 minutes and then I'm going to slice that up and dig into some mm, warm, tasty French bread. I cannot wait. So thank you so much for joining. So that was my little demonstration there for you on how to make can of flour 
French bread and check that out. Oh my god, it looks so good. I cannot wait to slather some butter on this and just mow down. So any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them as always. I just really want to thank you guys for your support. You really are amazing. I really, really do appreciate it. And I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Thanks for joining.